we are in the presence of a living God this morning. Do you believe that? He's a faithful God who is true, who is just. We're going to continue worshiping together. We're going to sing this hymn. And I just want to encourage you today to just reflect on his faithfulness in your own lives. Just through every season, through every circumstance, our God is the one who remains faithful and who remains true, who is constant no matter what battle we face. Through the highs, through the lows, our God is a true, constant God. Amen. He is faithful and he is deserving of our praise. So we're going to sing this together to worship our faithful God today.
Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Lord God, we just worship you today and we bring you praise. Lord, knowing that one day we'll be able to sing just as the angels do in heaven, God. Worship you, saying, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty, Jesus. We love you and we bring you praise. We just worship you in this moment. Surrender our hearts to you as we praise your holy name today, Jesus. To sing the song of ages to the Lamb And all who gone before us And all who will believe Will sing the song of ages to the Lamb Cause your name is the highest And your name is the greatest Your name, it stands
a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can come together and we can worship you. You are holy, holy, holy. You are the God that is above all things, the creator of all things, giver of all things, Lord. And we recognize that and we thank you for it. Lord, you have uh, been faithful to us and, and you have seen us in our misery and you have seen us with compassion and you have sent your son, Jesus Christ, to be the sacrifice uh, for us, to uh, pay our debt, to pay this, our condemnation of death for us and, and Lord you've done it all and Lord we have new life now in the spirit that we might be able to call out to you and you actually respond what a wonderful amazing grace Lord we just ask uh, those who are suffering this morning with ailments uh, physical uh, emotional or even spiritual Lord that you would uh, make your presence known uh, to them right now uh, in a real genuine way through your word and through your prayer and through fellowship, Lord, that you might work and do miracles. Lord, we ask your blessing upon every family, every marriage here, Lord, that you would bless them and keep them, make your face shine upon them, Lord, um, especially our children, Lord, in these crazy times, Lord, that they might hear your voice and know that it is the true and the real and what it is. Uh, and, and to erase everything else um, that they might know you. And Lord, we just ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Why don't you get around, say hello to someone you don't know, and have a time of... and everything that's going on. The only change is that there'll be no men's group on Tuesday evening. We have a deacon's meeting, and so we might be here for a while, so we're going to be, uh, we canceled that, and so there'll be a deacon's meeting here at two at 7 o'clock on, on um, Tuesday, so there'll be no men's group this week. No men's group this week, but Wednesday, marriage group is still on. Thursday night, women's group is still on. Saturday, hit is still on. Uh, Sunday school here is uh, in the morning, and Spanish is still on. That was not me. No. Um, was there? No. One job. Um, and so, so keep on uh, getting involved. We we do have um, on the seventeenth we have a special uh, family night, um, which is fifteenth. Is it the seventeenth? 17th, a special uh, family night, which is an organized potluck. Um, and uh, we'll be uh, celebrating Thanksgiving. And then in on the 17th, uh, on the 15th of December, we'll be doing a family night for Christmas time as well. So just keep those two on your calendar. And if you want to get involved with those, please talk to Stephanie or John uh, about uh, the potluck. Um, because it'll be kind of like an organized potluck. So we don't just eat salad. Uh, what? 
There's a link on the WhatsApp chat if you, you need anything about that information. QR code or no, just a link. Okay. Um, so that's all the announcements. Um, before we get to, uh, I have uh, take morning offerings, so I'll ask the, the, de- the ushers to come down and we'll uh, take our morning offering. Uh, it's getting that time, at end, end of the year time again, and uh, we're putting a new budget today and we've been faithful. Um, our, uh, we're right on budget and God has been faithful to us. Um, God is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and uh, he's really allowed us to help people this this year, um, to help missions, to help evangelism, um, to give away money for mercy, and uh, we're, we're doing good. And so uh, may God be blessed by this. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, as we uh, give to you what you have given to us, Lord, we just ask that you would multiply it and prosper it and, and make it yours, Lord, that we might be the people of God you've called us to be, that we might be merciful and compassionate and loving and that we would uh, just understand the privilege that we get to be part of the, the sharing of your gospel uh, for, for sinners who are, who are lost, um, that they might be found and know you in a real way. Lord, help us uh, every day with discernment on how to do this best, Lord. But you are the God, and you've given us all things, and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. So as, as the ushers are go- bringing around the, the offering, I'm going to call up uh, Giselle and Carlos. Um, they have decided to become members of our church, and we, yeah. Well, they, they actually decided to become members a long time ago, but I just got around to doing it. Um, so uh, for everyone, if you don't know, this is Giselle and Carlos Sainz. They have a bunch of kids in the back. Um, I, I, the first time I met Carlos, I said, how old are your kids? And she, he said, five, three, two, one. <laughs> um, so uh, you guys have your hands full, but they've been uh, an important part of our children's ministry. Uh, Giselle was an important part of uh, Vacation Bible School, um, and they've really got involved. Uh, Carlos and Tim and I work out uh, every Saturday um, together, so we become friends, and uh, they're just a really neat family to be part of our church. And so um, I'm going to uh, ask you uh, five questions, and then you can respond um, anyway, but this is this is uh, a a membership. We take membership seriously here. We're small enough to do so. There's a lot of churches who have stopped um, really caring about members, and if you go, um, then you're a member. Um, but no, it's more than that. It, when you become a member, you you actually have voting rights, and you you actually have rights and privileges, and and oversight, and and you're part of something bigger than your, yourself. And so uh, I'll ask you these f- uh, five questions. Do you acknowledge yourselves to be sinners in the sight of God, justly deserving his displeasure and without hope, without his sovereign mercy? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God and Savior of sinners? Do you receive and rest upon him and him alone for salvation as he's offered in the gospel? Do you now resolve and promise in humble reliance upon the grace of the Holy Spirit that you will endeavor to live as become as becomes the followers of Christ? Do you promise to support the church in its worship and work to the best of your ability? Do you submit yourself to the government and discipline of the church and promise to study in its purity and peace? You're now members. <laughs> and let me, let me pray for the family. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Science family and, and for Carlos and Giselle and the, and, the, and the kids. Lord, we thank you for bringing them here to us and the gifts and talents that they've already shared uh, with our community. And Lord, we just thank you for them. We thank you what you're doing in and, and through them. And Lord, we just thank you for their gifts and, and how they use them here. And Lord, we just ask your blessing upon them uh, as, as members here. And Lord, that we might know them uh, more, love them more, and... Uh, uh, that we might love doing life together. And Lord, we just ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome. Um, and that's just a, uh, an example. If you are interested in becoming a member, just talk to me and then uh, you can become members. It's really fairly easy. You don't have to. We're, 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 those are the five questions, and we'll talk about those five questions to make sure you understand those and understand the discipline of the church and understand all that kind of stuff. But if you'd like to become a member, um, 
it, membership has its privileges. Um, and it's, it's one of the privileges is spiritual oversight, which means um, if you're just coming, I can, I, I can kind of I give you advice, right, if you ask it. But if you're a member, then you're, you're basically saying, I want you to look over my life. And you're inviting me in to basically, and the elders in to basically say, hold me accountable in my Christian life, in my attendance, in my, in my study, in this. And, and it's, it's just a, another step of accountability as we do life together. Okay, um, we're going to continue our Bible study. In Thanksgiving, uh, last week we looked at a psalm in Thanksgiving, and today we're going to look at a story about Thanksgiving. And next week we're going to see another type of literature about Thanksgiving as well, the one uh, right before uh, we... We uh, celebrate Thanksgiving. So, again, we're going to be looking at, at in Luke, Luke 17. And this is a story that you might have heard before. We're going to look at it. Uh, Luke 17, 11 through 19. Luke 17, 11 through 19. And uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to your word, Lord, we just ask... Um, that you would uh, enlighten us, that you would give us a softness of heart, that your Holy Spirit would work and, and speak to us. And Lord, we just uh, really wait on you to minister to us. Um, we need to hear from you this morning. And Lord, uh, do you and do your thing uh, in us and through us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So uh, we're going to look at the, the, the virtue of gratitude and the sin of ingratitude today. Um, we're going to look at the importance of giving thanks. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. It's getting to the end. He'll, this is in Luke. He'll get to Jerusalem and be crucified there. So he's on his way there. Um, and he comes across uh, these uh, men. So let's look. We're looking at chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. It says, On the way to Jerusalem... He was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And the, he entered a village, and he was met there by ten lepers who stood at a distance. And they lifted up their voice, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And they went, and they were cleansed. As I'm sorry. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them... When he saw that he was healed, turning back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he, was, uh, now he was a Samaritan. Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. May God bless his holy word for us this morning. So Jesus is on his way, um, and he enters into this little village, and out of, the, out of nowhere comes these ten men. Now, uh, leprosy at the time was an incurable disease. And I don't know if you know about leprosy, but leprosy is a bacteria that enters the body, and basically it disintegrates the body from the inside out. All right? It's, it's not very pleasant. Um, at that time, it's very contagious, nothing short of like walking dead. Um, it, really ham it, it really destroys the nerve endings, and so you don't feel. And so what happens is you bump yourself, and you'll get an infection, but you don't feel it um, because of the bacteria. And so it, it got to the point that you, you can put your hand on a stove, and, and it won't hurt. Um, there was a, a story of one time uh, there was a missionary who was working with lepers, and he was trying to open a rusty door. And, and he couldn't open the rusty door. And one of the lepers says, give me the key, I'll open it. And he, he turned it and opened up the rusty door. And then the man looked down and he saw that the skin around his fingers had just fallen off completely. He didn't even feel that he had ripped the skin off. And so this, this comes along with, with an uncleanliness in the society. It's, it's really horrible. Um, the, the skin turns white and... Fingers either, either fall off or they get consumed by the body. They kind of melt into the body. Um, and so leprosy is, is not pleasant. Now, the word here for leprosy can mean any skin irritation, all right? 
but we're not talking about any skin, we're not talking about like dandruff, all right? This is, this is, this is not just anything. This is, this is serious. It is, it is decay and smell and it affects the entire body. And so you have 10 of them coming. This is quite a, quite a uh, welcome to uh, Jesus. And they were far off and, and they had to be far off. If, if it was a, a close associate, you could be six feet. If it was windy, you had to be 100 feet away. All right. Why? Because it's so contagious. All right. And so they had to walk through uh, the, the city or when people and they'd have to scream unclean, 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 unclean. They couldn't go to temple. They couldn't do anything because they were continuously unclean. And so they were the the untouchables. And we have, you know, there, there are some people who are untouchable in our society because of what they've done in the past or who they are, and, and, they're, and they're just considered not welcome. And, and, and that's kind of where um, they were. Um, we know, <clears throat> excuse me, we know uh, that Jesus in chapter 5 did heal a leper. All right, he actually went up and touched the leper, which was super you know, contrary to what people usually did and the leper was healed. So I think it's a pretty small community of lepers and they were just like, hey, there might be a chance that this guy Jesus can heal you. All right, so that's why they're, they're coming. Um, there's 10 of them, one Samaritan and, and nine Jews. Now you remember that Samaritans and Jews didn't mix, right? But when you're that sick, it doesn't really matter, right? Misery, it, it, misery unites. Um, and so it, they're without hope. There's no cure. They couldn't help in their own condition. They're really just stuck and smelly. And, and so when we look at this, there's a spiritual reality to this. And, and the leprosy or this uncleanliness of these ten is really a symbol of our sin. Right? Working from the inside out. It really affects everything. We can't stop it. And we have to cry out and understand. And they understood they were unclean. And, and coming to Christ, and the only reason they would cry out to Christ is because they know they're unclean. And so when, we, when we, we come to Christ, there is a understanding that we have a need for him. A spiritual need. And what we've inherited from Adam, and it's become part of our will, and it, it, it's something that, that eats away at us from the inside out. And usually we're the last to know. You know, everyone, you know, oh, you didn't know I was, and everyone can see it but yourself, right? Everyone can smell it but yourself, all right? And so everyone knew, and they cry out, and, and listen, there were dead men walking. There was no hope for them. And they couldn't help themselves. So they cry out to the Lord. And they cry out. And if you look at our text, it says, they cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Oh, did I mention that one of the things that happens in, in leprosy is it affects from the inside out, like I said, but it affects the vocal cords. So your vocal cords start to rot. So, so they ba you'll end up mute. So for 10 lepers crying out, it would sound like really raspy, almost a shriek type of things. I'm not going to do it but because I don't have leprosy. Um, but, but, but you can imagine it, it's, it's not even an easy thing to do. All right. But this cry was a cry of desperation. It, it, was, it was the end of self. I talked to, to someone this week and... and he doesn't have leprosy, but he did say, I'm so tired. This has been a tough year. I don't know how much more. And, and it, it, it moved me because I was like, well, he doesn't have leprosy, but he's in the same position. And I, and I think he, he was just like, it's too much. And what he really needs is mercy. Right. And so but but it's, it's interesting, though, because Jesus saw them. He saw the 10. But remember, the 10, he sees us all. He sees a billion in mass of sorrow. He sees sin defiling the world. He sees and hears those who cry out to him. 
And I, and I don't think we really understand how important it is that we recognize who we are and cry out to the Lord. Now, our own experience tells us that we're not perfect. Let's, let's jump to Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans chapter 3. Verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And I, and, I, and I guess I ask the question, do you see yourself as a sinner today? Do you see yourself in need of a savior? Without any voice left, getting tired of trying to do it your own way, getting tired of trying to fit in and, and be clean when you're not clean, and show yourself to be clean and everyone sees that you're not and you're stuck and you're smelly, do you see yourself by nature to be a sinner? That's all of us. If you look at the verse again, it says, uh, and for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's not a person here and there's not a person in the world who doesn't fit that requirement. So did I call you all kind of spiritual lepers? I did. We're all in a process of decay and there is no hope. We are walking dead without the, the, the work of a savior. Now, this is the, the beautiful part about it. Jesus sees them and hears those who cry out. Let's jump to uh, Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Psalm chapter 30, ver 34, verses 17 and 18. When the righteous cry out for help, the Lord heal, hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. I'll read one more. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. And this, this is a wonderful thing that we have a God who hears us, a righteousness. A, when the righteous cry out, the Lord heals and hears and delivers from their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. If your heart is broken and you need, cry out. Now, I had a famous sermon one time, and it didn't go well, but I, I remember at the start of the new year, I, I told you guys all to have a, a horrible year. All right, I, and I hope that you had a horrible year. And, and then, like, halfway through the year, everyone was like, Pastor, can you take that back? Um, <laughs> But I, I, I said that because we were studying Exodus and it wasn't until the things got really bad did the people of Israel cry out to God and God responded. And, and, and sometimes, like I said, we're so stupid in the sense that we hit rock bottom and we keep on digging a hole and we keep on going away from our Lord and we keep on going that he, he does use troubles and tribulations and problems and, 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 and relationship issues and he uses it all to grab your attention and say, hey, are you gonna keep on going that way? You gonna keep on that way? Or is there something better? He hears those who cry out. So the first was, are you a sinner today? Second of all, have you gotten to the point in your sin that you say, not my way, your way, and you cry out for help? They were commanded to go to the priest. He, Jesus said, all right, go show yourself to the priest. I wonder if the, 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 the 10 were a little you know, upset. Go tell the priest, we're sick. What are they, what's the priest going to say? Did you know that for 1,500 years, no one, the priest had special rules and regulations for cleanliness in Leviticus chapter 13 and 14, but there was no one for 1,500 years who had ever been cleansed of leprosy. In the Bible, there's only two, Naab, which was not a Jewish person, and uh, Moses' sister. But those are all to prove a point. So he basically said, go to the priest, show yourself. There's no history of ever being healed, but go. I was like, gypped again. 
right? I want him to touch me. I want him to heal me. He says, go. And as they went, they were cleansed from this awful disease. As they went, they were cleansed by their awful disease. They had to obey the word of God. See, there's a tendency that says, and, and I've heard this before, well, heal me and then I'll go. Solve my problem and then I'll believe. Let me win the lottery and then I'll give. Let my life be perfect and then I'll do something. And what he's, what he's asking us to do is actually to walk by what? Faith. And to trust they had to not heal, then obey, but they were supposed to obey and then heal. And I think there's a practical lesson here for us today. If you need a miracle in your marriage, start loving your wife and see what happens. No, the, the, usually the prayer is, Lord, fix my wife and then I won't have a problem. Right? If, if you're, you're having a problem with your marriage, start respecting your husband and see what happens. If you're having problems at work, start serving and see what happens. If, you, if you're in financial hardship, start making good financial decisions and see what happens. I, I, I think we, 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 make, we, we have this tendency of saying, all right, Lord, clean up the mess, heal me, and then I'll be yours. And he goes, no, I want to do this along the way. Obey me and walk first. Oh, that, that would take what? Faith, right? Obedience, and when we walk by faith, it means that our, our actions are regulated by the word of God. Our thoughts are formed by the word of God. And, and everything we do is by the word of God. He goes, just walk. Well, I don't know where I'm going. When, Jesus call, when God called out Abraham, he goes, go to the, to the land I'm going to show you. Where's that? No, no, just, just go. Start walking. I'll show you the way. And so I think it's super important that we understand that God, specifically Jesus, can heal any way he wants to heal. The, the first leper he touched, that's the one I want. Right? The other ones took some faith, and they had to walk away from him towards the priest. That's ridiculous. And sometimes the Lord asks you to do some pretty crazy things, like love your enemy, like forgive again. The times that you've been forgiven by Christ, no, forgive again. Oh, but I don't know. Do it and, and watch. Because God will show up. So they're walking and, and they get healed. Can you imagine they're walking all of a sudden, you know, they, their face starts coming together, their voice changes, all right? They don't smell anymore. And they realize that a miracle has happened along the way. Now we know that only one returned. The question is, did he go, and was he truly obedient? Did he go see the priest, or did he return right away? Most probably he returned right away. And it says, if you, if you go back to our text, it says he returned to glorify God. All right? But how did he glorify God? He fell at the feet of Jesus Christ and thanked him. You know, I, I heard a, a sermon this week about Thanksgiving and giving thanks for our stuff and, and having grateful hearts and all this kind of stuff. It's, listen, none of it matters unless we're glorifying God and thanking Jesus Christ. Because I'm going to tell you, once they're healed, the lepers healed, their problems on this earth have not been resolved. Now they probably have financial problems because they have been out of work for a while. Maybe relationship problems because they've been so ugly for so long. You know, we don't... But, but it takes, it, it, it hasn't stopped yet. But the solution to the in problem, not just the, the solution to the outward problem, is Christ. Now, I, I want to go back to Psalm 100, and this is what we talked about last week. And I want to go back because 
I told you it was like a little series, and, and, and we're called to thank God for who he is. So if we look at Psalm 100, I see this guy coming back and make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the, the sheep of his pasture. He's the creator. He's the owner. He's the sustainer. He enter into his presence with thanksgiving, into his gates, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. And I think there, there's something about this, this Samaritan, the, the outsider, and don't get me wrong, I bet you, because I just know human nature because of what the Bible says, but I bet you after they were healed, they didn't want anything to do with that Samaritan. They might even said to Samaritan, you don't even go into the temple. Now you're the unclean one. Oof. So easy to judge others, right? So he comes back. Give me the, and you can be in disagreement with me, but I think there's more people who pray than who praise. More people who pray than who praise. What does that mean? Lord, help me with this. Help me with my marriage. Help me with my leprosy. Help me with this. Help me with this. Help me with this. Help me with this. And then it happens, and we just move on. Or we say, thank God. But thank God is not praise. What he did, falling down on his feet and thanking Jesus, I think our praise has to be really specific because we can't even thank God without thanking God through who? Jesus. I think there are more people who are religious and go towards tradition than those who glorify God. Listen, you can study the Bible all you want. But if you don't do it with the right heart attitude, it doesn't matter. You can go to every Bible study we offer. But if you don't come, and we, we talked about this last week, if you come to church without a grateful heart, it's not going to fit. You're going to be like, ah, I wasn't into it today. And this is something that's super important is because if we do come to praise and glorify and to thank him, I think there's, there's more people concerned with leaving their circumstances in this material world than wanting a relationship with Jesus Christ. Moralistic deism. Just, just give me what I want. Help my life to be better. Here are seven things to help you get a better life, to fix your wife, to fix your husband, to, to make more money, to do... A, we just want a better life. And we've made Christianity something that is not. The Samaritan understood and he returned. It wasn't about going to the priest because he knew he was already what? Cleansed. And he had to thank. He had to worship. He had to glorify God. And how did he do that? He glorified the Son. He alone, I, I believe, received a cleansing for his soul. You know, it, it, faith has made you whole. The nine were satisfied with health, but they weren't whole. And when we talk about whole, we're talking body and soul and spirit, mind, we, you know, holistic, that we're all together. And sometimes we settle for too little. Jesus is the key here, and, and remember in Acts 4, it says there's only one name in, on heaven and earth is a mediator between men, and that his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, and so when, like I said, more people pray than praise, all right, if you're praying to God and you get a blessing, you go, oh, thank God, all right, and you don't praise God and thank him through the Son, You've missed the point. And you're going to ask me why. Well, I, we have to go all the way back to the beginning. The reason why people don't like to talk about Jesus is that you have to talk about the cross. And if you have to talk about the cross, you have to talk about your sin and your need for a Savior. 
and that goes against the pride of man. These leopards lost all their pride. If you've been married long enough, you lose all your pride. <laughs> Both sides. It's very humbling. And it, what, what, we, what we need to do is, and we need to talk about Jesus, but to talk about Jesus and our need for him, we need to confess our sins. We need, we, we need to understand that we're not that good. Oh, but pastor, I'm a good person. Are you? When push comes to shove, put yourself up against the law, and you're going to see that you've broken every commandment there in thought, word, or deed. So what happens? Jesus is the answer. It's the answer to the lepers, the answer to the sinners, the answer to all of our needs and problems because he loved us with an eternal love and an amazing grace. And he comes as our sacrifice and said, listen, you can't do it. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to pay the price for you. I'm going to atone and pay God's wrath that you deserve. And it's going to be on me. And then I'm going to send you my spirit called the Holy Spirit. And then we're going to live together and you're going to be more than conquered and it's going to be great. I just wanted not to be a leper anymore. Do you see how we, we missed the point? Now, I, I don't even know if, if they, were, they understood who he was because they cried out rabbi or master. He didn't, they didn't recognize him as God. They didn't understand the benefits of regeneration. And, and yesterday at HIT, there's something that just kept on going over my head. I think there's a lot of people who are convicted of their sin, but not converted from their sin. And I think there's a difference there. You can be convicted of, oh, yeah, I'm a sinner. Oh, yeah, I'm a sinner. Oh, yeah, I'm a sinner. But has God transformed you and given you a new heart and a new mind so you hate that sin? That you run away from that sin because now you have a new identity and now you're a temple of the Holy Spirit and now you're made for righteousness, not to continue in the way of the world. I think they were convicted that they were lepers, but I don't think they were converted to believe that Jesus was God. I don't think they were made whole. So before I close, just a little bit of bad news. Jesus notices the other nine, by the way. All right, the one comes back, but he says, I thought there was 10. Where are the other nine? So if you are, and I'm not assuming you are, but if you are ungrateful, if you're convicted of your sin, but you don't glorify or praise God, guess who's watching? And he says, didn't I just heal them? Didn't I just bless them? Didn't I do what they asked? Didn't they, so, so, you get to the point that you're so close to the kingdom of God, but you miss him. Because the kingdom of God is not a thing, it's a person. They get so close, they draw near, they cry out, they even obey. But they never worship, give thanks, or glorify. Go to chapter, Romans chapter 121. Romans Chapter 121. It says, For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although the lepers, they knew God, they didn't honor him or thank him or change or do anything, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. They were satisfied with not having leprosy. They thought that was it, health and wealth, when there was so much more. They became futile in their thoughts and their hearts were darkened. What, what would you say if I said, I, I think Jesus wants worshipers more than workers. I think he wants worshipers more than knowers and studiers. I think he wants worshipers more than 
giving away. I, I think he wants love. And, and, and this is about their hearts became darkened. And for this man, we're talking heart health. We're not just talking about leprosy. We're talking about the whole thing. And when we finally understand that God seeks worshipers, and that is the glorified God falling on our face to Jesus Christ and thanking Jesus for the grace that he has given us. When we do that, we have a clear view of what God wants us for us, to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. So where do we go from here? Well, first of all, let's give thanks, all right? Not just, oh, thank God, but really understand where all of this is coming from. And, and, and listen, we've become so material, and I'm not saying money, I'm talking about material like this earthly world that we forget. Listen, uh, the futile hearts and darkened, uh, futile thoughts and darkened hearts. Listen, take this in. The number one priority for God is not your health. It's your soul. It's not this anything in this world. It's your soul, because God is not working for the eighty years that you have here. He's working for an eternity, and that's why He makes you whole from the inside out. Confess your sins, cry out to the Lord, walk in faith, and give thanks. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. We come now and we, we, we have to, Lord. Although you have wiped us clean and you've paid the price on the cross for us, Lord, we come now and we confess our sins. Because we've forgotten. Because we've rationalized. Because we've... Our thoughts have become futile and our, darks are, our hearts are darkened and we forget. But Lord, we realize and acknowledge that we are sinners and we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And right now we cry out to you. Hosanna, Hosanna, son of man, save us. And just as you did the, with the lepers, Lord, that in your sovereign will, as we walk by faith, that you would continuously heal us. That we would die more and more unto sin and live more and more conformed to the image of your son. Lord, we glorify you. We worship you. And we give thanks for your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, as we leave here today, fill our hearts with joy as we rejoice knowing that you are our God and we are your people. That we have a new life in you and the old has passed away and we're new creatures prepared for the works that you have prepared for us to walk in. That we have purpose and meaning in life. We're called to love, Lord. We just thank you for that. And in this crazy world, Lord, let us just understand that you are our sovereign king. That with us, with men, all things are impossible, but with you, nothing is impossible. Lord, give us faith, give us love, give us hope. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we're going to practice our Holy Communion, and this is an outward symbol of an inward reality of what Christ has done on the cross for us. And this is a symbol of his sacrifice for you, his love for you, his compassion for you, his mercy for you. We at Hope Chapel, Chapel practice an open communion table, which means that if you have uh, made a confession of faith and put your hope in Jesus Christ and him alone for your salvation, if you recognize that you're a sinner and without him you cannot be saved, this is your table. This is for you. If you have not made a, a confession of faith or a member of a Bible-believing church, then it's not, there's nothing special in the, the bread or the wine or the person who offers it to you. What is special is when taken by faith, it's a means of grace by which we understand Christ in us and us in Christ. If you would like to join us, please come through the center aisle and sit on, come back to the side aisles and we'll partake of this all together.
every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour. Stay thou nearby, temptations lose their power when thou art by. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the bread together. That same night, before the supper was over, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup for forgiveness of sins. This is the cup of grace. Let us partake of it together. Now receive the benediction. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Lord, thank you and be with us until we meet again. Amen. Church, let's leave here praising this morning. See the tomb where he lay, see the stone.